Hope Lenore, professional strategist and coach. And today, you're going to get to know Rise and Fly. Go on, I simply say it's on again, it's on again. Hey everybody, welcome to the show. My name is Desiree Mapp, and thanks once again for tuning in to Getting to Know. If you're not yet familiar with Getting to Know, Getting to Know is a show where if you own a small business, if you are an entrepreneur, if you are a leader in your community, we wanna to get to know you. We wanna to get to know your business. We wanna to get to know the inspiration behind your business. For today's show, we are in the home of our guest. Our guest is a professional career coach and strategist. Okay, what does that mean, Desiree? <laughs> Great question. I'm glad you asked. Welcome to the show, everybody. Miss Hope Lenore. Welcome Thank to the show, Hope. Thanks for having me. Thank, uh, you. thank you for um, the great reception that you invited, um, that you provided for um, my husband, my son, and I. And uh, just thank you for allowing us to be here. Absolutely. Thank okay. you for coming. Yeah. Um, so I'm really excited uh, about this interview. We got a lot to discuss. So let's start uh, with where are you from? I'm from Louisiana, oh. from Louisiana, North Louisiana. What's North Louisiana? So um, it's about two hours from Shreveport, small town called Bastrop, Louisiana. Okay, okay. I know there's a Bastrop, Texas, uh -huh. uh, but Bastrop, Louisiana. Okay. So I came here um, about 11 years or so ago mm -hmm. for a career. Mm -hmm. um, so I was looking for a new opportunity and one of my cousins challenged me. She said, I bet if you come up here in two weeks, you'll find a career. And in less than a week, I did wow. here in Texas. That's so good. That's why I'm here, and I love it. I love Texas. So when you were uh, born and raised <laughs> in Bastrop? I was. How old were you when you left home? <sighs> good question. Now it goes into my age. <laughs> um, so I went to school south, Louisiana, at Dillard mm -hmm. University. Mm -hmm. um, and then I went to uh, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Then I went to New York. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and, and then I went back to Louisiana, taught at Gramlin State University. Wait, wait, teaching at Grambling? Uh, that had to be 2002, oh, 2002, 2003. Yeah. I graduated, <laughs> I graduated from Grambling. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, I was there um, for a little while, for mm -hmm. a few months as a professor in communications. Do you remember how old you were yes. when you got your first job? First job, I was 16. What did you do? And I worked in Cato Fashions. <laughs> retail. <laughs> so I was in retail, working uh -huh. in, in clothing. So that was uh -huh. my first job. Okay. Yeah. And did I, you like it? I, I liked it because it was my first job. So I was uh -huh. excited. It was uh -huh. official. I was working. Um, so I looked forward to it. But I like meeting people. Mm -hmm. um, not so much straightening clothes. <laughs> <laughs> but I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. But I couldn't see myself doing that for the rest mm -hmm. of my life. But it was an opportunity. That did you at least get a discount on the clothes? I did. Okay. <laughs> so that's another good perk. I got okay. a discount on the clothes. And to this very day, there's not many Cato fashions around mm -hmm. now that I can I tell. I think there was one in Arlington in the Parks Mall. Okay. I'm not sure if it's still there or not. Yeah, I did see one in um, Hearst. Mm -hmm. I think it was Hearst next to a Walmart. Yeah. Um, and I went there a lot, and then they closed down. Mm -hmm. I don't see too many often, but when I do, I, I'd go in there because I like what they have. Um, when you were at Dillard, did you work while you were in school? I did. I worked mostly uh, in the summertime. Mm hmm um, I did work for the mayor, Mayor Mark Morial, when he mm -hmm. was there. I was in the public relations department. That's a good job. Helping to write, yeah, yeah, helping to write uh, for him uh, with his team or editing some of the pieces that mm -hmm. they wrote for him. So I did. So when you finished school, yes. you said you went to New York. Mm -hmm. What um, type of career were you trying to get into when you, when you left school, when you, when you finished school? Broadcasting. Oh, really? Going into broadcasting, and I ended up um, finding an opportunity with children's television. So I was with oh. Noggin. I don't know if you've ever heard yes, of that. Yes, I've yep. heard of Noggin. So Noggin was getting off the ground about that time, so I was an assistant producer for mm -hmm. the Noggin television station. Uh -huh. Was that here or in? Uh, that, that was in New York, in Manhattan, yeah. Okay. Um, so I worked there for a while. Do they even still have Noggin? They still have Noggin. Um, but it's not popular. It's not like Nickelodeon, even though yeah. it was supposed to be kind of like a spinoff of yeah. Nickelodeon. At what point in your career did you realize that you wanted to be a professional career coach? What happened between Noggin and professional career coach? I noticed, well, after I left New York, 
um, I went to um, teach at Gramlin State University. Mm -hmm. And after teaching at Gramlin State University, two completely different two complete, worlds. It, it is different, um, but what I taught was broadcast communication. Mm -hmm. So I was teaching okay. that. Um, but I realized or felt like that teaching at that time wasn't for me. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it. I liked touching the students and helping them grow and challenging them, mm -hmm. but it wasn't for me. So at that time, now that's something I may do when I <laughs> retire. <laughs> um, Go, go that method, but um, then I went into the corporate world. And it was in the corporate world that I realized how much I was already coaching people about their careers. Mm -hmm. I did it at Gremlin, I did it in New York, but I did it in a friendly way, mm -hmm. um, which I still do now in a friendly way. But then it wasn't, I wasn't being compensated or didn't see it as a career choice. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until I got into corporate America that I realized this is something that I do and I do it well because the people that I coach actually when they implement what we talked about mm -hmm. they're very successful mm -hmm. and so that's what made me stop and think this is something I love to do um, this is something I should consider doing as my career professionally yeah. this is what I can offer the world did yeah. you know if that would if that was an actual job did I know if it was a job yeah it wasn't a job. <laughs> yeah. um, so I have to say, even in corporate America, I, I took the opportunity. It wasn't available then at that job, mm -hmm. but I did go to the executive and say, this is what I like. This is what I'm really good at. I would love to do it. Can I do it? Mm -hmm. um, and he said, sure. Now, of course, that didn't include any pay raise <laughs> or any other benefits, mm -hmm. but yeah, you can do it when you have an opportunity, mm -hmm. do it. And it, I ended up coaching um, professionally over, I'd say almost, it was almost a thousand people within a year. Wow. So everyone that entered those doors actually had a conversation with me about professional development. Okay. And I kept taking that to another level where I said, I want my own company, Rise and Fly, so I can touch the people not at the corporation, but people everywhere. So what is, can you define for us what exactly a professional career coach and strategist does? Sure. So I walk into, or I uh, retain the, safe, the services of Rise and Fly. What do I do? Yeah. So <clears throat> I would say most people come to me because they're not happy mm -hmm. in their career for various reasons. And they think it's because they're not getting recognized. Mm -hmm. Or perhaps um, they want a promotion, but they haven't been able to get that promotion. So that's why they come to me. So as a coach, I sit down and talk about the challenges they have, what questions, their uncertainties. So I do those type of things and give them tips on how to move forward with that promotion or just to make sure that they're getting the recognition that they believe they deserve. Mm -hmm. um, so the conversation, how it was started was, tell me what's wrong. Tell me about yourself. Why are you frustrated? Take me through what your job is like. What are your responsibilities? Because my questioning, so any, anyone who's ever had a session with me says, yeah, she asks a lot of questions. <laughs> but my question is to not only reveal to me, but to reveal to themselves what the real challenge may be. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it is, well, you're not sure what you're expected to do. So that may be why you're not being recognized. Sometimes it is, there's a culture shift that's happening in your business um, that you may need to be more aware of or learn more about. Or it could be um, most of the time, this is not the role for you. Okay, let's talk about uh, the book for a moment. Okay. Um, how did it come to be? Yeah. So um, it's interesting because I didn't do the book all at once. Mm -hmm. These are a collection of writings that I've done okay. uh, throughout my span of life. Mm -hmm. But I was coaching professionals and even entrepreneurs um, that talked about writing. I'm gonna write, I'm gonna, gonna, gonna. Mm -hmm. And I found myself kept saying, do it, just do it, write mm -hmm. it. People are waiting, they wanna learn, they wanna hear your story. And I paused one day and said, I'm telling my clients to do this, mm -hmm. but I haven't done it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so that's what made me say, okay, let me sit down and tell my story. Mm -hmm. And when I did that, I realized I was finding these little pieces that I would just write um, and I said, you know what, people need to hear this. 
um, especially purpose and relating it to purpose mm -hmm. because a lot of my clients are not living in their purpose or they want to find their purpose or they have questions about their purpose. This is an opportunity for me to not only do um, what I encourage my clients to do, but also have a story that um, my clients will find helpful mm -hmm. in their careers. Yeah. Um, in your book, there are a few repeated phrases mm -hmm. throughout. Mm -hmm. uh, two that come to mind is gifted purpose. Yes. Whatever you, you don't just see purpose in there. You mm -hmm. see gifted purpose. Yes. And you see rush. Right. Let's start with rush. Okay. What do you mean when you say the rush came? So it's like a feeling of a whole bunch of emotions and you have to get it done, even though you may not understand what it is, but it's a, it's an overwhelming feeling of, um, I don't want to say anxiousness because it's not always negative, but there's a, there's a, just a mix of emotion that just bubbles up that drives you to want to do something mm -hmm. about whatever issue or situation may be. Um, it's hard to describe, but I would say if, you knew something exciting was coming, mm -hmm. but you didn't know what it was. So you can't really be sad or happy or anxious. It's just something's coming mm -hmm. and I can't wait. So it's that feeling that something's coming, that excitement that something's coming. Is it, uh, can you liken it to anticipation? Maybe? You, you can anticipate. Um, so, but I would say it's even more. Mm -hmm. it's, it's an expanded, more energetic, more passionate version of anticipation. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we can anticipate a party's coming or anticipate mm -hmm. dinner's gonna be ready. But that's something that you know is coming at a certain time and you're just waiting. Mm -hmm. With the rush, you don't know when, okay. um, but it's coming mm -hmm. and it's coming really soon mm -hmm. and you don't know what, what it is. is. Um, so it's that feeling, that drive mm -hmm. that you have, yeah. Now, what do you mean when you say gifted purpose? Right. Because it's gifted purpose a lot mm -hmm. in the book. Right. So what is gifted purpose? We use purpose just by itself in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. So the purpose of, um, let's say at work, the purpose of us answering calls all the time is this. Or the purpose of you coming into work at this time is to make sure somebody's here for the client. Mm -hmm. um, you can see that as a purpose. That, but So I just wanted to make it clear that that's not what I was talking about. Mm -hmm. Gifted purpose, this is something you specifically have been given to do something with. Mm -hmm. It's a gift. And it's just for you. And only you can operate that way with this gift, a certain mm -hmm. way with a gift. But it's purposeful because you have to do something with it. It's a mm -hmm. gift that you don't just put on the shelf or you put in the corner. Thank you very much. It's mm -hmm. no, this is a gift and I have to share it mm -hmm. uh, with other people. Mm -hmm. I have to do something with it. In your opinion, mm -hmm. what do you think happens with people who ignore their gift? Mm -hmm. Like if you didn't tell this banker mm -hmm. or, you know, let's say your cousin had an issue and, and you just you just ignored it whether that be for the gift that you have or for someone who has been gifted, gifted purpose, mm -hmm. they chose to ignore it. Yeah. They know exactly what it is, but it's too much work. Yeah. What do you think happens to someone who chooses to ignore what their gifted purpose is? Right. So they're going to toil a lot mm -hmm. for sure. Um, I can say with certainty, there's going to be some toiling going on with them um, emotionally, I would say spiritually, whatever it is that they practice, mm -hmm. it's just not going to be an easy feeling for them. So they're not going to live just a very happy life mm. because they're always going to be hungry or they're gonna, always going to have this feeling that they should be doing something else. Mm -hmm. that, that, can be, that can eat you up, yeah. which is why I can see why researchers say it could be um, a detriment to your health. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. um, it makes sense to be that sh much stress and anxiety that can hurt you physically. Right. Yeah. As, it, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. So I was just going to say, as far as, you know, um, in a situation like the banker, I'm not sure what would have happened. Perhaps he would have gotten a divorce. Mm -hmm. He may have thought later that, you know what, maybe I should not have. Maybe I was that person to stop it mm -hmm. before it got bigger than it should have. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not sure what would have happened. But the good thing is that I don't have the responsibility to say, you know what, 
you got to make sure he doesn't get a divorce. My responsibility yes. was to tell okay. him. And I think that's what gives me some relief is that I'm not responsible for that next step. You just tell. Yeah. You just mm -hmm. tell. Um, in another passage, you say, uh, just because you are gifted does not mean everything comes automatically. Right. And that you don't have anything, you don't have to do anything to grow it. Yes. What do you mean when you say that? Yeah. So I'll take me for an example. So I have a gifted purpose, but unlike what we see on television, for me, I just can't go out into the street and everybody that says, hey, I'm going to go see Hope today and she's going to prophesy to me. I don't do that. I can't do that. Mm -hmm. I only operate when I'm admonished to do so. Mm -hmm. um, but it is my responsibility to learn more. Um, because there are more people I can touch the more I do learn. Mm -hmm. Also, there's more people that I cannot hurt. I hope I've never hurt anyone, but people not hurt because I'm doing it the right way. Mm -hmm. But I've got to learn how to be sure that I'm doing it the right way. Mm -hmm. But the more I learn and grow, the more other people and more people will learn and grow. And we also have to recognize that our environments change. So we can't use our gift the same way in one place mm -hmm. and expect to use it the same in another place. Right. That's not how it works. It's kind of like communication, mm -hmm. right? So you don't communicate with everyone the same way. Right. You have to communicate with people in the way you, they need you to communicate mm -hmm. or the way they're most receptive to communicating. So that's what I mean by grow. You can't use your gift the same way every single time. Mm -hmm. You grow it, you learn more about it, um, you touch more people because you're growing, they're gonna grow. How do you grow as a, uh, as a professional career coach? I watch a lot of videos. <laughs> so I'm one of those video persons, so I watch a lot of videos. I attend conferences. Mm -hmm. um, my sessions are interactive, so I'm learning as my clients are learning mm -hmm. as well, um, so I use that. I also read books. Mm -hmm. I also listen to audiobooks. Mm -hmm. It's one of those things that I talked about earlier. It's something that you wake up, you want to do until you fall asleep at mm -hmm. night. So whenever there's an opportunity I see that's, that would benefit me, I'm going to grab it. Mm -hmm. So I may go to a conference here. Mm -hmm. I may pick up this book because someone suggested mm -hmm. it. I may watch a video, whether it's Netflix or whether it's something I purchased. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to do that. Yeah. What do you say to people who you may come across you speak at a lot of conferences mm -hmm. and and whatnot what do you say to people who believe that they don't have anything to give they don't believe that they have a gift of purpose and i know i am with you i believe that everyone was put here to do something yes. but then there's just a lot of people who just don't believe that that includes them because right. we think gifted purpose is so grand we live in we live in such a media driven society yeah. everything is so grand if i have a gift of purpose then that must mean i'm that must mean I'm expected to do something great. And it's not necessarily all the time, but what do you say when you come across people and they don't believe that they are gifted to do anything, yeah. but just pay Uncle Sam and die? Yeah. And so let me first say about the great, because for those people who think, oh, it has to be something grand and great yeah. to touch millions and I got to yeah. see it and make lots of money. Yeah. The reality is, is that when you use your gift of purpose, the person that you use your gifted purpose, to them, it's grand. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. And it has touched them in ways that you may or you may not see. Mm -hmm. It may be 50 years down the line, they come back, remember when you said, mm -hmm. guess what I did? Yeah. That to them is grand. Mm -hmm. And that to you should feel grand. Mm -hmm. And knowing that you have a gifted purpose, you are grand mm -hmm. <laughs> because you're chosen just for that. So for people who say, oh, I don't have a gift of purpose, I go to work, I come home, I yeah. cook dinner, that, that's the questioning strategy. Well, why do you feel that way? Mm -hmm. Well, what did you do today? And a lot of times even the what did you do today is, well, did you know you touched Samantha this way? Mm -hmm. And I heard about Samantha telling Jonathan that you did that and touched him because you said, yeah. so it's bigger than we think mm -hmm. it is. It's, it's the reality. You. Yeah, it's not about you. Yeah. And because you don't see it, you may not see it for a reason how many people are touched. There may be a reason behind that. Mm -hmm. But you do have a gifted purpose, but it's in me asking those questions that they finally do realize, oh, I do, <laughs> mm -hmm. or I remember that. Mm -hmm. Or some of the people that have read my book actually contacted me and they said, 
I've been having the same feelings too and I never knew. Mm -hmm. I just thought I was an average person. Yeah. No one's average. Mm -hmm. You got a purpose. Now that you know, put it to use. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So we've covered a lot of stuff, yes. right? Yeah. Is there anything you want to add? I, I do want people to really know just how great they are. Mm -hmm and that there are ways to be recognized, to be promoted, and to live in your purpose, mm -hmm. in that greatness. Mm -hmm. And it's not until you do those things that you actually live a life that you never even imagined you were going to live. Mm -hmm. Because not only are you saying, this is my purpose, I'm operating my purpose, I'm driven, I'm motivated, from the time I wake up to the time I go to bed, but I know that I'm touching a lot of people's lives, and I know that me being visible is okay. Mm -hmm. It's not bragging. Yeah. It's letting people know, this is who I am, and this is how I can help mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. and make you or this business even better. So just imagine if everyone operated that way, just how different environments will be because people are living in purpose, appreciating purpose, giving their best because they love it. It's mm -hmm. their purpose and they feel the value in all of it. Um, so that's what I would have to say. Let's back up and talk <laughs> okay. about this little modesty thing. Cause sometimes I think it, people can be too modest, myself mm -hmm. included. Yeah. How do you get past that? I am good at what I do. And, yeah. it's, and it's not bragging, yeah. you just, I'm good. How do we get past that? Yeah. So the, to me, the most, um, effective way is to let people know you're here to help. Mm -hmm. So when you go with that helping approach, I can help you by, mm -hmm. it feels better to that recipient. Like she's mm -hmm. not bragging. Okay. She's coming to help me. Mm -hmm. And she's obviously really good <laughs> at whatever it is. Yeah. And she's opened her arms. Uh -huh. So it, it, it's visible. It's more effective. They know you, they mm -hmm. connect with you, they mm -hmm. trust you. They're going to talk about you to everybody else because you're here to help. Mm -hmm. And when you help, they realize she is good. Mm -hmm. She is good. Mm -hmm. And they're going to write. That's the word of mouth thing. I, yeah. So I know we've all heard word of mouth is probably the most effective. Yeah. That's because people know you can help. Right. Yeah. Right. So what's next for Rise and Fly? So Rise and Fly, I'm always having conferences. Mm -hmm. um, I've been asked to have... Um, sell yourself conference more often mm -hmm. and I actually the title is sell yourself the legal way that even your grandma <laughs> would be proud so what that means because we were taught as as younger kids that yeah. you know don't brag sit down somewhere just exactly. do your job exactly they'll they'll know that you're good um, but it I talk about tactics uh, where you can really sell yourself, be very mm -hmm. visible so people recognize you as the go-to person for whatever it is your gifted mm -hmm. purpose is. I'm also, um, I know um, an author who's working on a book called The 40 Day Shine, mm -hmm. and she's helping women realize just how valuable they are. She asked me to do a forward. I'm excited. I feel privileged okay. Okay. to be able to do um, a forward for her. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm also going to be working on another book with several other women um, talking about the different um, aspects of life, whether it's motherhood, um, it could be the professional career, it could be depression, it could be marriage. Um, so I'm working on that book. I'm really excited about working uh, with those women all over the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, so I look forward to that as well. Okay, yeah. that's great. So how can people get in touch with uh, you and find out more about the book? Mm -hmm. or to find out more about Rise and Fly or the Sell Yourself Conference. Does that sound the legal way? Yes, <laughs> the legal way. <laughs> sell Yourself the Legal Way. Yes. How can they find out more about that? So um, people can contact me directly at hope at riseandfly.net. Mm -hmm. um, my website, by the way, is riseandfly.net. Mm -hmm. I'm also on Facebook. And I love when people come and engage and tell me their needs and mm -hmm. um, things that they appreciate mm -hmm. on Facebook. So, of course, it's facebook.com slash riseandfly. Okay. It's also cool because I'm on Pinterest, and a lot mm -hmm. of things that I post on Pinterest is anything from attire to great professional books to read mm -hmm. um, to great quotes to kind of inspire you for the day. Mm -hmm. um, and that is Pinterest.com slash mm -hmm. Rise and Fly. Yeah. So they can contact me on riseandfly.net. Um, either way, just look for Rise and Fly. Okay. <laughs> That's Hope Lenore, everybody. Um, thank you for allowing us to be here today and thank you really for having me i had a good really time fun. too it was great talking okay, to you great. <laughs> so uh that's it for the show everybody uh thank you for tuning in once again make sure uh you subscribe to our youtube channel if you like what you see um if you have any if you have any information about our guests 
If you have any information about our show, getting to know, uh, you can contact us at info at sixmanprod.com. Again, my name is Desiree Mapp, everybody, and we'll see you soon. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.